All right, so we've been talking about um, asking OSI to give us a quote for doing a trail assessment, a detailed trail assessment for behind the school and a less detailed um, high level thing for some other trail opportunities in town. Um, and the other opportunities that we've talked about right now are just Cumston, and I'm not sure if we want to include that or not. Uh, and the trails that I've been working on with Sean and Dave between Abbasi and um, Prescott Hill Road. So I don't know if there are any other trails that we want to include. We uh, Chad did bring a a printout of the snowmobile trails, I think. Um, so I think this would be good to also uh, give OSI. Okay. Do you have this in a GPX? Anything that, uh, that is actually a photocopy. Okay. This year, uh, the state we do has GPX. Um, you don't have a GPX for all the local trails, then? I personally yeah. don't, but uh, the state does. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, we had uh, kind of okay. brought them through our trail system yeah. a few years back. Okay. And mm -hmm. So are there any other areas that we want to include in that? Tell me about the path from Cobbacy to Prescott Hill. So there's a, that's the series of cross country ski trails that we've developed back there. Yeah. Um, they, we enter by Sean's house off Cobbacy and it goes to Fredrickson's uh, and it connects in, it crosses the snowmobile trails and connects onto Pete Bouchard's land and where he has a whole series of trails that he's developed. Are there, there's a bridge there, isn't there? Or did there used to be a bridge out behind there, yours? There's, there's a bridge there's across a, the creek. Culverts. So okay. culvert. Yeah. It floods whenever it's, <laughs> whenever it's really wet. Yeah, whatever goes around there. But um, so it goes through Sanborn's land and OG's land and um, up through, uh, anybody else own land in there? It's just those three. Just, just those three. three. Yeah. Yeah, and, and those trails um, are great for skiing. Uh, we've got mountain biking permission on on, on Peter's land, yeah, on Peter's we'll and OG's land, I think. Um, and then uh, walking would be acceptable, and horseback riding was good with um, Tom OG as well. Um, and we're gonna they're looking at putting a kiosk up on uh, by Fredrickson's tree farm, a kiosk, a trailhead sign there. Mm -hmm. That's in the that's in the works right now. Is there parking? There's a spot right now for two cars right there um, in front of that sign. That's up by the right. Because there's a straight path that goes right through all the middle of the trees. That would be the access point. Um, but just just higher than that, there's like a step, a little hill that's like two feet high where cars could park, but we haven't talked to Mr. OJ about exact parking there. Um, but if there was more than two cars, I mean, he talked like you could park there, but you just can't get there from the pull in because it's a little steep for a little car. I think you can pull right off the road, though. You can totally can pull right off the road. It was just, I just yeah. don't know. If and I think he's OK cars. with that. That's the impression that I got from that conversation yeah. is he's OK with us plowing, even in the wintertime, plowing a parking lot there to you know, park three to four cars, it's not, not yeah. huge. And that would service the need based on what I've seen at my house. My house is bad parking because uh, it's wet. It's a wet takeoff. I mean, they can right park there. in your driveway? <laughs> they, they, they have, <laughs> but <laughs> my driveway has often got other like trailers and stuff. But no, usually there's, you know, if there's people out there, it's, you know, two at most. And, um, but it is a wet kind of spot to start from sometimes. And I don't, I don't anticipate not using that. I think both are good places to yeah. start from. Right now, the trails are good for skiing, um, but they're not the best for summertime use. Um, in places, um, the Bouchard land is is good, but there's a lot of wet stuff out there. So um, I think if we looked at that, I think we'd, we'd probably be looking, yeah, are there, there are things that we could do? What types of things could we do to, to improve it for year-round use? But it's never going to be what we're envisioning here, mm -hmm. where 
nice smooth path. I Not that type that. of path, right? <laughs> we're to be more adventurous. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like you were saying earlier. Yeah. That's why I think it's good to start here to show people like, look, here's like the really nice highway of paths yeah. and stuff. But as yeah. you go this way, you get more adventure this way. And this is how it goes this way. Maybe it's worth coming and everything. take a look at if from the fairgrounds down to uh, Blue Road. It only crosses a couple of properties, I think. And yes. it may be yeah, it's fairly reasonable to get something got, there. Uh, Mary Turner. All right. So, yeah, it's good or something. Yeah. 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 So, here we'll so talk to OSI and ask them for a quote based on the discussion that we've had. And then we'll talk about that hopefully at the next meeting. And if we, if we agree on, on that, then we can ask the selectmen to approve money. Okay, the next thing on the agenda I had was just discuss current trail system and other trails in progress in town. Um, we've kind of discussed that yeah, already. Exactly. <laughs> like Sean said, we are working on a kiosk there. Um, I talked to Peter Bouchard recently and, and he's definitely good with continuing use with trails on his property. Um, we we do trail work on this. We'll do some trail work this fall, um, and I'll send out emails or messages to people in town that I know that have helped out in the past. So this is something that's meant to be accessible to anyone in town to use. Have you thought of uh, the Moth Academy Day of Caring as a potential resource for liver? I've thought about it, and I, I have not done that. Yeah. Um, they also, to graduate, they have to have a certain number of community service hours. So I think whenever we put out trail work, if we give it to whomever's the principal over there and say, look, anybody looking for two hours of trail work, here it is. Anybody looking for another four hours? Yep. I, th I think we'd have, um, have it's going to, you know, we can sign off on it as, hey, they came, they participated, they did, and push it as, hey, it looks great on the resume. So they're collecting uh, projects okay, right, right now for, I think it's September 27th. 27th. There you go. Yep. So yeah. that's yeah, a potential yeah. step forward and also good to engage young people yep. as stakeholders. Right, and I could, be the, I could be the faculty person on that, on that group that goes onto the trail. I won't be able to do much for the days before I have moving from 23 to 26. Right. Don't come home and jump on the day of caring, but just a bunch of kids in the woods with chains. Yeah. <laughs> Tim brought his leaf blower last just year. Just for the record, we don't let kids use chains. There's a rake, buddy. There's <laughs> some gloves and a rake and maybe a hoe. And, that's, that, and that, is, that is the thing, like how much work could be, could right. be done on a trail with and without power modest tools. well or yeah without sharp tools or if we do have some people maybe we can go out with the power tools a day or two ahead and chop things and just not clear Set it and have true. them big like, all right you guys are doing the groundwork so yeah. that is exactly what i've done on the island when yeah. the kids come out for that is i'll spend two days making a giant mess with a chainsaw and then bring them out give them a tour let them use the rope swing mm -hmm. and then <laughs> they do the brush clean up all right um, how are your trails coming? So it's a 0.4 when you take the perimeter and you get 0.5 when you go in the perimeter and come back through. Um, I've got insurance and it, we're trying to put in the parking lot aspect of it, but not asphalt it because it needs to be usable. Um, the website's live. Everything's up, just waiting for people to use. I've had groups reach out asking if they can snowshoe on them, if they can ski off of them. Um, and the classrooms, if they can rent them, and yep, you can. And there's, I designed it with three tiers. If I'm teaching it, or if they just want the classroom to to do, and I've been approached by a timber framing company to host a week long natural timber framing next summer. There, they also have a felling course where they 
fell the trees and then they bring them over and I'm like, you got insurance, you can do it, I don't care. So it's, it's going to be active in that aspect of it. Um, and my son, unbeknownst to me, has spent the summer chainsawing on the other side behind the barn. He's like, Mom, I, how could you not know that? He's running a chainsaw. <laughs> okay, I can't hear it when it's way down, <laughs> which is where he was. He's like, I can get all the way around. I thought he meant the pasture. No, <laughs> it's down over the hill through and into the backside, which is amazing. I didn't realize how much damage we had from the December storm down there, but you can now get a four wheeler all the way down there and the trail coming back up. You guys would love it, but I'm not taking a horse over it because it's, it was an old logging road and it's all like rocks. So it's big. It's cool. Does that loop start at the edge of either yours? end? You can take just, it either end of the like... pastures and you go down and you loop through and he added a T. <laughs> so, um, just memory doesn't change. <laughs> There's some stuff you don't see, um, but that can be worked into more of the the equine aspect or the dangerous mountain biking aspect. <laughs> but so that's that's adventurous mountain. Yeah, it's the adventure. Wear a helmet. <laughs> um, but those, you know, if we want to add those in, add them in. It's a great central location to get your dip of adventure. You're close to the ambulance. I don't know. <laughs> Are you okay with the OSI guy taking a walk? Please. Okay. Right. Please do, so because do. it needs to be done. I don't know, besides Guy Piper, how you would end up looping this way. And I've learned to not go on Guy's land, um, at least not on that piece, because we've had traps. Yep. So those, those are scary. And the only other weird places I've hit in this town is um, barbed wire behind on, on Ridge Road in there, there's, there's there's tons of barbed wire that you do not see until you stop. And um, there's a very interesting place that spits you out on 202 with Stephen King would love. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, you know, I, uh, Doobies, you know where Rebecca Doobie lives? Um, they have a huge mass amount of land that hooks onto the Dumonts. And that's a nice, easy walkabout, rideabout that, you know, we've had permission to do stuff with. But again, it's also, uh, it could it could loop you in down towards the dump and down in behind to yours or up oh, to Fredrickson's yeah. if you get it's behind it. It's, it is a snowmobile trail aspect, um, but they're great to branch off if you have the permission of of the people on that's all. But no, that's that's 40 or 50 acres. Mm -hmm. Have that because as long as I don't want people obviously in the house, that's why that's why it's everything's a crossroad. The parking area, the the dispatch, like go from there, but they can cross over on on either side of the perimeter and go down. Um we just did the fencing so that's more visible. Whether you're snowmobile, snowshoeing, cross country skiing, you can make your way all the way around the perimeter of the fence. And if you're a coach or whatever, you can you can see the kids as they go through that aspect. Uh, but yeah, I mean, include include that because this is as long as the insurance and the coverage of like it's not like people are going to go in with the horses when we're there. They're just going out in the perimeter. And if they do, I have business insurance that covers stupidity so i mean have them look at it if if that's a closer easier bike it up adventure trail get get a little spice of everything here do it awesome not something people can use just for an estimate <laughs> for osi how how many miles is that kind of network there i know you said that this new area is 0. 0.4.5 0. 0. 0.4.5 0. 0. and then I didn't track it on the track X. Um, the major loop. I just it. looked yeah. like how <laughs> quick. Where are we, Finn? Um, I mean, there's a little brook you have to go through. There's it's the it's big. It's, it's, it's more than what near. the proposal is going to be for over there. I know. Yeah, yeah it's definitely it's, it's a significant size. Do you think it's forty or fifty acres back there? Yeah, so we own we own forty yeah. to fifty. Depends on which thing you look at. Yeah. But some of the terrain too, like so it's a prayer there's boulders through. down there. And you're like, ah, 
I'm going to need more than this pickaxe. <laughs> yeah. him, I'll just give him the acreage. And yeah. If he's, if he's, so whatever service you use to clear that space is like super impressive the way you cleared it and it's like ready for use yeah you can drive your truck on it when he's done yeah that was impressive yeah, yeah. that was crazy. and i told him we're in a committed relationship now <laughs> it's a six hour minimum it's 250 dollars an hour um he is more than fair i think i can't find anybody else i had six other people um and some didn't show up or anything He's a young guy. He's out of Dexter. He owns his own stuff. Um, so he can do yeah. logging as well. Um, he cleared like a highway size. Yeah, like that's fast. the skid steer. Like no yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just stay out of its way. But I think best bang for your buck, you don't have you don't have any tree stumps. You it's all mulched in. We had Scott Kemp come over and York rake it. Um, that's what those big piles are um and i actually mowed over there today with with the zero turn you didn't and plant that grass over there no you didn't plant that it. that came up that way. yeah that came up That's so crazy. i mean it's it's like if you're so if you want to be able to go right on top with whatever you need whether it's fabric and then stone dust or something it's so writable i don't you're you're ready no jumps and do anything it's ready to go yeah <laughs> and the deer love it <laughs> keep going around Um, any other trails that we know of that anyone's working on in town that have that we should know about? I've known about some trails over by a sand pit over there, I think on Cemetery Road or something, but I think those are more like uh, motocross kind of high school kids out there doing stuff. I mean, I've been told about them, so I went and checked them out. So they're there. It's just... Uh, they just need a little bit more work and we can figure out if it's something we want to incorporate over there. But are they at the sand pit? Or the some of them go to it. Um, I haven't been able to map it all out because I haven't gotten over there in a couple of years. But yeah, it starts in you go by the, the sand cemetery, pit. right? Either behind the cemetery. Yeah. And there's a little system over there. And then if you go the right way, all of a sudden you're at the sand pit. And it's like, okay, you can see where people have been riding and doing stuff. That's so, a, is it Darren Frost's sand pit? Used to be Randy Tibbetts. Could be. That name sounds familiar when you said that. Yeah. Which side of the road? Right. Now, like, there's something that crosses and goes to the side or the south side. Is it is it the McGee pits? I don't know too many names or anything. And, uh, and Kids actually, were telling me. Corporate, right? So yeah. probably not. Yeah. 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 But, I, need to, I bet you. I bet you. Pretty sure that Darren bought. Randy's yeah. Yes. Sand pit. So yeah, there's a few different pits out there. I know Jimmy Hopkins has a pit. Mm -hmm. We've got a snowmobile trail that kind that comes out from like Ridge Road out by Jack Traps and goes out through and ends up crossing Cemetery Road, goes down onto Jimmy's property and out through there by Teddy Weymouth and stuff. But um, I think we just need to make sure whatever we're doing, we're making sure we get with landowners for sure. Yeah. Uh, before we do anything as far as going to look at stuff, especially as a committee, just to make sure we're right. doing our due diligence for sure. But, but yeah, I mean, if it's something that they're open to that, that would be great to tie it in mm -hmm. for sure. On Gilman Road, where Old Town Farm Road comes? I'm not familiar yeah. with road names, but I okay. know why. Well, visually, I <laughs> On Gilman Road, Old Town Road, there's a trail, South oh, Aubrey wait, the world. lives right at the end. And there's a trail straight through to the cemetery pit from there. She used to ride it. We used to ride it all the time to go that way. Because you can't, we couldn't get in with horses um, up by Jack's traps in there because there's wonky bridges. <laughs> so we call that. So we'd go down and through that way and it would loop around. Uh, I know I just talked to Andy from the milk house in passing and he's got some land available for any trails that people would be interested in that's great that would be that would be cool the web is getting bigger yeah, yeah. actually we've been talking about is he a butt between he and Noe's family they have a connection to Woodbury mm -hmm. they've talked about possibly developing 
But Andy's fear is always he has hay fields. Yep, there are hay fields. <laughs> and I think the milk house, you could go um, with that. I know he likes the nature based outdoor learning. I know his, he brings his son down, I think, Freeport twice a week for that. Um, you can then go to the mole grants or the outdoor education grants. And um, like Oak Hill applied and they all got those fat bikes, you know, like 30 fat bikes. Um, and the kids use them in the in the PE and stuff. And I don't know, I don't know all the pieces for the mole grant, but I mean, what if it was, what if it worked out to be here's 30 bikes, you know, with a rental aspect, here's our trails, try them out. I mean, you have a whole another, ooh, look at that. And they do the bike a day, bike to school day, you know, and get them wanting to use the trails. Do a scavenger hunt, do a poker run. Have you ever done those? It's a poker run. Ha, ha, ha. You have trails and you have five houses or five whatever stations. And you go to the five stations and you're given a playing card. And then you come back, put the horses up, you have a potluck, and you play your card. That's a poker run. Um, we've done it with that, and then we've done I've I've done it in in Sweden where you you Nordic ski and you have stops for blue vine, which is the spiced wine, and you go around that way and it's a merry time after. You know, I mean, these are these will pull in the community aspect of of how or why are we going to use these trails or. You know, and you could do like haunted trails. No, too. Like you're drinking is I just <laughs> well, no. <laughs> but yeah, you could do tracking adventures, um, scavenger hunts, and that's just the different hat of how you get people to right. use them. Right. Yes. Cool. That's, that's where I come in. No, did hay rides the insurance on that <laughs> through the roof. It's just a hayride, it's not haunted. Right. <laughs> and you could do a historical hayride. And go that way. That would be something for Cumson, do a historical walk. Do the ghost of Henry Cocker. Not awful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next Sorry. thing on the agenda. Um, RTB grant application and process. So we just, we have this as something that we need to re review um, what the process is, what the application looks like. Uh, I don't I don't know how we should do this. Is this something that do we have? Do you have the do you have everything there? I've got sort of so I, I printed out okay. Awesome. So the timeline um is I mean I think we're doing things pretty much on I think we're in good shape. You know, the first thing they said is develop a firm concept design plan for your project so that's sort of what we're doing. Um Special design and engineering costs incurred during the year. You apply are eligible for the project map. So, to the extent um, you know, we get approved and we spend money on OSI, that would go to the you know the twenty percent of, of what we need to to cover. Um, and and the real sort of things you know that they said you know in terms of getting. Sort of approvals they they look they're looking at from the um start preservation commission uh, natural areas program fisheries um that's they say three months before so i mean i think we're in i think we're in good shape you know yeah but i mean i think this is uh, this is something i think just people you know when you have a chance take a look at it you know i think it's just something to um, keep in mind here and here's you know what uh it's got a checklist of basically sort of what we need to include in, um, you know, the application. Um, obviously, if it's all, you know, electronic. And, yeah. Can you send that out to everyone on the group? Uh, everyone is seeing their mind. Yeah. Um, if you go to the, I mean, if you go to the website, the, uh, the, at the RTP yep. website, um, you, you can get it. I'll, I can just pass it right. I think I got yeah, you got an email. Out. The links. Done. Yeah, I think it's been sent out. I don't know. Did, did I send it? I yeah. Did, yeah. Did, did everyone get that? 
I, I did. I, 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 I printed it. If you have, okay. I might have maybe a I did show it. You probably <laughs> sent it out, but I don't know if everyone like. I just try to make a habit of everything. Um, I can find it on mine too. Yeah. yeah. So well, I mean, I yeah, you got to. I got it too if you want, and I'm just trying to. So, it. who's downloaded the grant application and program guidance? And read through all the materials to familiarize yourself to the program. Uh, step two. Oh, so I was going to do that for us. Step okay. two. So I'll okay, I, do that. I, I think we, we're sort of in the process of doing that. I mean, I think, you know, we need to get into more detail. I didn't look at in detail. When's the deadline? June 28th. That's what I thought, June. Okay. So, um, So some of this we're ahead on. Yeah, some of it are. Do we need to vote on um, which trails we're going to include in the detailed study, whether you know we're going to have Cumston in there or not, and how far out we want to go? Is that a, a vote thing? Is well, we could vote on it now for what we want to ask, ask OSI, OSI to yeah. include in the proposal. We're definitely going to have to vote on the proposal once we get it from OSI. Right. Right. So I don't know that we need to vote on it right now. Yeah, no, probably not. We have consensus right now. I think we can just vote on the proposal when we get it back. Um, just remember that when we have something we're satisfied from OSI, we need to re refer to the Economic Development Committee for their review, which would then follow, go to the select board. We can convene an Economic Development Committee meeting just for that. It's almost a quorum right there. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a do you have regular meetings? Or? Uh, depends on the time of year. Summertime, not so much. But if you know our deadline is June, then in the winter time, it's not a big deal. Once a month. So once we get that quote from OSI, at that point, is that when we would like move forward with getting to this with the school board as well and things like that to make sure? I mean, we don't want to pay for something if is until we know for sure that. They're on board, correct? I know. I know we've had a communication, but like, if ultimately whoever the decision makers are, we <clears throat> always should really make sure that's in line. I think that's. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I would think that we should probably try to get on. I really, I, right I think so too. So, and to be honest with you, I think that's one of the things as a committee we really, really need to make sure we're doing is always getting with people first because you know to speak through and like. Yeah. It is all private land and it's a privilege. It's definitely not a right for us to be able to use it. And I think that's something for me as a trail master for the snowmobile club was very important. Like if we were looking at a reroute, making sure we got with the landowners and all that stuff first, because we don't want to have hearsay going out to people and then have to back tread or whatever. And then uh, because it is their land ultimately, and we want to make sure that we're upfront and saying this is what we'd like to do and, and kind of take it from that perspective. Because if you start getting people that um, feel as though we're overstepping, it could go sour, I think, in terms of talk and things like that. So I think it's just something we really need to keep at the forefront in making sure that we're doing our due diligence and um, kind of taking that as our first priority and making sure we have the permissions before we go too far with stuff, I think. So do we need a spreadsheet set up with the land, like the mass, the, the center here, the land owner permission, yes or no? Yeah. Kind of like an organizational aspect so of that. So what I have for like our snowmobile club is uh, we've got about 110 landowners that I've worked with that our trail system going across. Um, and I think basically just every year we send out that landowner permission to make sure that we're still good to go um, with the trails and, and stuff. So um, that would definitely be a good starting spot if we're looking at certain spots, just kind of taking those landowners, getting them down, which I think, like we've said, it's pretty much just RSU property and then yourself right over by the school. I think our discussion was to cut out the other public land or private landowners. Yeah, just to primarily stay now, on the free. RSU property. Right. Um, right. So just to simplify it and make sure that, because obviously the more you put into it in terms of resources and making a 
if something does get shut down, it'd be nice to not have it on private land if right. possible. So should we try to get on the agenda for the next RSU? I don't, I, yeah, I think we should. Um, I looked today for the next school board meeting and I couldn't find it. Do you have anything that you got from school? It's the first, second Thursday, maybe Tuesday of every month. I know it really well. No, I don't know. It, it's like, I think it's like the first Thursday of the month or something. I, I don't know. I should not. I can ask around some people tomorrow at school. Yeah, because yeah, it's, not, it's, not, up on the, it's not on the website. I, I had to merely look and then she's yeah. like, it's not there. I'm like, really? No, I'll look. Find it out pretty I easy. couldn't find it. I, I need to ask a person that's going to yeah. be yelling at me for not knowing. We're looking for RSV2, like, what are we looking for? Just go board, the, the board, board meeting. Okay. Yeah. I can get that information by the next thing. We want to get that to yeah. find out before the next yeah. meeting. So you want to just email? Bell. Yeah, as soon as I get it out. Yep. See what the time is if it's. Sort of, yeah. I think it's. Sort of, I think it is first Thursday of the month. Probably. So, Thursday. I mean, this so that's, that's probably. We're, we're not ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, I doubt that they're going to give approval at a meeting where we show up for the first time. Yeah. yeah. About something. Um, and, and I'm not sure that we, I'm not sure if we need approval or if we just need, is it okay if we just go ahead with? And the, yeah, I think, yeah. I think what they might say is that, yeah, go ahead, do your assessment and then come back to us when you have some plan. And then I think that probably, I mean, I, I'm trying to, yeah. I'm trying to predict what they'll say, but right. I think that's what's hard to go through with all of it if we're not going to have permission at the end. But I think, so, but I mean, I, I, they're not an individual. Hopefully they'll so. just, right. they'll right. give us sort of the, Blessing at least to do the, the the study, you know, to to say we're comfortable enough that you guys could do this. Yeah, I mean, I think the their motorway. their fear is the the athletic field. Like, if you know, so many people tear it up, but it's like we have measures in place for where we're going yeah. and and designated trail. And you know, if they have questions on that, that's why we're having somebody come in and assess. Yeah, that field wouldn't be part of it anyway, necessarily, unless we're going down to Main Street. Right. We're not having that that part, but yeah, yeah, or public public on the property right. during the school day. But I think, like as a whole, I mean, if you look at the RSU, I mean, Vaughn Woods hooks up to like the Hall Bale uh, school right. system area. Ultimately, we'd like to have just some sort. Of, it wouldn't necessarily be one big land mass, one landowner. Or, um, but I mean, basically, like, we'd like to have that here in Monmouth too, right. which we don't. So that's our end goal, right? Is just to have a it's a, it's a blend, yeah. and it's and it's got to be a blend. I mean, Miranda Cook has a track. There's so many people be bopping around there. Levitt mm -hmm. has a track. Winthrop, they're all you know, it's great for a lot of older. That's true. There's plenty of examples. It, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can get the playground. I mean, the playground's close to the track. Well, that's and, right. Yeah, what park is? Yeah. It's adjacent to the school. The yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I, I think those those are all positives where public and and the school come in and yeah, I mean, like I said, the, the feedback we've gotten so far has been really positive, both mm -hmm. from Rick and the grounds person who I talked to, Randy. Yeah, Rick, yeah. yeah. I mean, they were basically totally yeah. fine, with it. but I, I think we should talk to them, yeah, yeah. check the box, yeah. yeah. With regards to land, I know I, I've talked with Chris before. I've got trails on my property too. In terms of like, I've already got trails established and I'm more than fine with people snowshoeing and stuff like that. Unfortunately, I'm going to always utilize my tractor and haul trees through it. So it's not something that I want graveled up or whatever. It's, it's something that the kids are always out doing stuff on them as well. Um, so, but I mean, I, I just don't know that it makes sense to have it looked over because I'm not planning to necessarily change it, developed into something more than right. what it is, I guess. But, right. Right. Levels of, levels of upgrade or however, <laughs> there must be a system for it's definitely this bikeable, right? Bikeable, you know, how accessible, I guess the accessibility part of it, 
and runnable, which was what one of the original goals was, I think. There's like hand cut trails, machine groomed trails. So on the island, big island, up the middle of the invest, we've got about a mile of walking trails, and one one trail is probably uh, ATV friendly. Good luck getting your ATV. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, Wait, is it a Mattel Matchbox ATV? <laughs> but uh, if you wanted to include that in you know, the map, it's always been our intention to leave those trails open to the public sunrise to sunset and without restriction. We've already got kiosks and maps and things posted that make it very clear that the public is is welcome. And so if you want there's no need to do an assessment because I don't think we're going to do anything with yeah. other than in right. like yours, uh, yep. just keep it the way it is. Um, but if you wanted to include that in the mix of things you, you know, would count on the list, that would be fine. Have, to have a little swimming trail out there. <laughs> swim here. Yeah, park here. Little swim buoys. Yeah. Just swim lane. Swim lane, that's right. <laughs> that's true. We get triathlon. Here we go. We get and well, this time of year. Water's flat. We get plenty of canoers and kayaks from the neighborhood. Yeah. Paddled out there a few times, yeah. walked around the trails. <laughs> All right. So everyone should try to review the RTP grant process. I guess at some point in the future, we should probably make a checklist and start trying to target some dates when we think that we might yeah. Yeah. need to have steps completed. Just gotta be working on what. All right, other old business. I don't have any other old business. Um, Anything that you knew that we need to follow up on? Um, so last meeting, there was discussion about uh, me kind of connecting with the um, snowmobile club and just talking about maybe public access routes and stuff like that. I did bring it up at our meeting and um, it, they, just the general um, consensus, I guess, would the club was they were having a hard time to come up with specific routes that came to mind for public access, I guess, um, specifically. Unfortunately, with what we've had for luck with like ATV or looking at that, um, there hasn't been a huge or there was for a little while people looking into that quite a bit. And there wasn't like one specific area that kind of came to mind. So we didn't really have anything specific. Um, they thought just looking at some of the other towns that have maybe done stuff like that, like Greenville or um, I'm trying to think uh, even there's some in um, like Gorham, New Hampshire and places like that. It's kind of open and then it makes it a little easier to figure out what you can do as far as trails, because you have that opportunity to hop onto the road to get from one place to the other. So Take it for what it's worth, but unfortunately, I don't really have much information in terms of main key places to look at. I guess at this point, um, so that was kind of the thought was if if it was something that we could look at, and there was some control either with the board, uh, the trail committee, or something to say this road. If it was voted on by the town to do public access, and then. As a as a committee, we could conduct control as we had opportunity to make something accessible, so it wasn't having to go through the town every time, but it's more or less monitored by the committee, I guess, or something. But so, uh, so is the is the snowmobile club asking for uh, a a town. First of all, I heard I heard like a vote, which I think makes sense, like to, to ask the voters to approve whatever the plan is so that there's some you know authority uh, behind it. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, put it on a warrant, um, you know, for you know, either a town meeting or some other election uh, when we get a lot of people uh, participating uh, so that you know, people 
feel citizens feel respected yeah. in the decision. Um, second, second thing I heard was the snowmobile club is saying like Greenville and some of the other sort of northern towns, they want town roads just to be open as a en masse, like every town road, open it and then see what gets used. Is that their thinking or? I think I mean, the, the, what we didn't understand for sure was like, unfortunately right now at this point, we don't have really any trails that we have huge landowners or areas where we can go from one place to another per se mm -hmm. for ATV, which is, we don't have any ATV trails currently in town other than a few landowners that may have made that opportunity um, open. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's hard to pinpoint a specific road or section, I guess. Um, that being said, if if the trail committee or if we, if we feel that there's opportunity to do something with whether it be golf carts or, or whatever in terms of trails, and I guess it would make it easier to know if if basically it's open, it may be easier to connect those landowners as we find them if it was open, but. Um, yeah, I, I don't have specific routes or whatever at this point that okay. makes sense um, unless it were to be something that was voted on to open our public ways and then that needs to be further controlled by the committee somehow or I don't know but um, so uh, maybe a logical step forward would be to ask the select board to craft a warrant article for our next town meeting uh, that would uh, ask the voters to approve. Um, I mean, it's not a necessary requirement because state law basically says the select board can do it. Mm -hmm. um, but if what I'm hearing you say is, you know, check in with the voters first, that's totally fine. Um, and ask them if they would approve allowing the select board to do it, you know, to regulate that mm -hmm. on an as needed basis. Could, could we put out a survey? that just had ATV points of interest? Like if if you came to Monmouth, what would a point of interest be that you would say, I'd rather jump on a golf cart and go to here versus driving my vehicle? Would that be down to the beach? Would that be to Cumston? Would it be up to Chicks to pick apples? Would it be to Frederick's? Like, I don't know. And then kind of gather data there and then say, wow, 85% said they want to be here, only 10% said this. So what if we just opened up one, how would we get from point A to point B? That might be a way to get data. That might help sort of crystallize it in the minds of- Like what people. are we asking? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it is a little bit of a chicken and egg <laughs> kind of thing. And I, I think that's what we as, or what the snowmobile slash ATV club didn't know, like how the process would work. I mean, I think the struggle would be like, if you had something, does the select board or does the town want us to go to them every time we did have a potential road or do we want to go to the town and say, can we make it off? option to utilize public ways mm -hmm. uh, for public access with ATVs or whatever. And then from there is the select board or the trails committee that kind of says, okay, this road we are going to start utilizing as a public access to get from this trail to this trail or, or how that works. We weren't really sure, but um, at this point, like I said, we just didn't have specific roads in mind that we are looking for, I guess, to get from one place to another. I kind of like Catherine's idea about uh, putting out a survey and getting people just sort of thinking oh. about it. Yeah. And we've got the November election coming up, which is, you know, a well-attended election. So we could ask 
I mean, ask people to, if they want to fill out a survey, um, you know, what their attitude is and what might be possible and um, what different, you know. I mean, put a QR code up. Connected. Put a QR code up while they're waiting to vote. It goes to a Google form, you know, fill it out, and then your spreadsheet's made for you. I mean, the data's right there. You don't have to have, have options on it. Yeah. yeah. Thinking at the heat of at the yeah. Thinking I mean, in the moment in a survey that's obscure like that would be hard. You kind of have to paint the picture using the survey of what we're looking for. Yeah. But you yeah, you could load it with four or five different options of where to go or or open ended so cut from the town. Right. Yeah, awesome. I mean, it would be the sort of thing that we could hand out at at the voting at the polling place when anyone pick, when anyone picks up a ballot, they get a survey, and then they can choose whether to turn it in or not. I mean, that's sort of the thing that we did when we were designing the TIF language to include trails. Right mm -hmm. before we did that, we did a survey that said what is, what are the priorities mm -hmm. for the use of our TIF funding. What do you think is most important, least important? And we put all the possibilities that we could think of as an economic development committee, but then we left it open-ended so people could fill stuff in, um, just to get people thinking. And that's why, you know, the trail sort of rose to the top of, of, the, of the pack in terms of things that people wanted to see TIF money spent on. So it could be the same sort of methodology. And we could use November when there's a, you know, probably two thirds of the town is going to be showing up to vote at one point or another. Uh, so everyone gets an opportunity to fill out a survey. And if they decide they don't want to, that's fine too. It's just an optional thing. And it's very, I mean, it's not a hard and fast method, but it, you know, it's not like an election, but it'll sort of give us a sense of what it is that people are interested in. Should it should the survey include more just about trail priorities in general? Sure. I think for I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, what are yeah. people yeah. interested yeah. in trails? Is it going yeah. 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 up? Biking, biking, yeah. 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 Goats. <laughs> goats. <laughs> oh my god. Keeps poison us. Sorry, no goats on this trail. Focus. Goat goats right now. From here down. Trail work. So. And eat it. They can do it. You want to take the lead? I was hoping Catherine would do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you want me to create That's a survey? Yeah. Okay. I can do this. Yeah. 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 Okay. I can do this. Uh, that would that would help us prioritize what sorts of trails people want to see and what they're added. You know, kind of help us understand attitudes. Yeah, I think it would be good to get their what people's right. uses, what guy uses their answer. They don't know you're doing. What, it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and points of interest like yeah, yeah. Maybe at our next meeting we could take a look at you know a first draft and yeah. kind of brainstorm it together. Okay. We need to have like one of those maps of the town behind us on the wall where we can turn around. Oh, just put a little sticker and yeah, contact start on pinpointing it. things. And <laughs> also, I, I mean, if we're doing that survey, maybe at the very last line, do you have land you're open to allowing access? Ooh, to yeah. that yeah. Yeah. And would you be it, willing to, to, in addition, build that network great. of what we have and we can start? Yeah. That's great. Surveys can be getting it down onto a map, maybe. Surveys can be built to <laughs> two answers, which is <laughs> really cool. And informative. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That'd be great. I'll work on that. Any other old business? All right. Does anyone have any new business for today? All right. Other comment? <laughs> Anything to add? <laughs> so one comment on your survey, you have to have two versions. You need to have a paper version because mm -hmm. you're going to have some people who don't care as far as And then you can have just a piece of paper with the QR code. And having the Conservation Commission has done one survey and very, very, very 
and then conservation, the um, comprehensive plan committee did a survey. They didn't get very good response. So don't put all your eggs in one basket about doing a survey. No, I, I think there's there's how many different groups we've got on Facebook. I mean, you can target that way with the QR code. Yeah, you we, can. We did that with the Conservation Commission. Okay. Do you remember got, how many we got on our survey? Yeah, like less than 30. Right. Was this the, sorry, was this the marijuana one? No, no, no. no. Or was the, no, 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 I think it was in the hundreds. 120? Yeah, something it was in the hundreds. I mean, it was enough. Good response. Yeah. I mean, if you, I think I you think, talk to most statisticians and they'll say anything right. more than 35. And yeah, yeah. Get golden. Yeah. I think there's a way also to, we would want to limit the number of people who can respond once. You can on Google Form. Okay. You, you, because you can, you collect email. Yeah. the email and it's only allowing one response per email. Um, so then you you would have to have somebody doubling on the paper ones looking yeah. at it just to see if that's I, I figure out how to do it in the class. Well, I mean, I've got like six yeah. different things going. I was like, yeah, yeah you yeah. can, but then you, I mean, it's not. Well, I, I just space. fear that the response you get is from the loudest community as opposed to an overall sample. So that's just well, I think the other part is it's great that we're getting. 18 and over if you do it at the voting polls. But I think that the high school is a is honest to God, it's some of those kids are interested in the cross country, the Nordic skiing. Yeah. They need to be given this survey too. And I guarantee you they're probably gonna be like, oh, this is old hat. I do use this technology, I can do it. And they're probably going to do you're it. You probably get a decent response. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some of the answers might be serious. So <laughs> well, <laughs> no chain sawing by your I'm telling your mother. <laughs> chaps and a helmet. Yeah, yeah chaps and a helmet. Um, Not cool. Yeah, if we get a survey, we can get the, we can get the QR code as long as we get permission from the, the, we'll the QR code to the homerooms. Right. They scan and do it, do it in yeah. the homeroom or something. Yeah. I think there's there's that. And, and there's then I mean daycares. That be interested in that. People that own daycares, are you going to use these um, preschools? That's mm -hmm. a whole other yeah. aspect. The aging... Can't remember the name of it. Age friendly. Age friendly. You know, are, are they going to want accessible trails that they can really kind of be mobile on, but not trip on a root and die? And you weren't here earlier, but Julie you mentioned something about the comprehensive plan. Is that being updated? It does it include yes. trails? Should well, now be? that question two is passed, we have a consultant. And that consultant is being paid to sort of bring it all together. Are there specific elements added to trails to make sure that's in there? I, don't know. I do not. I am not on that committee. Okay. We, are, we are actually meeting with the facilitator as the conservation commission at our next meeting. She's okay. coming to our meeting and she is our whole agenda. I think there's a actually rumor has it there's a comprehensive plan meeting. Thursday. Thursday night? Yeah. Is anyone going? I can't see that You don't? I work. What is it? Thursday? Thursday, yeah, Thursday night. What's on? School board meeting, too. I don't know. It's on the title website. Okay. Yeah. You want to be the uh, Trails Committee member representative? I'll do my best. Yeah. Um, Thursday. Yeah. Let me yeah. just confirm that for you. Comment. Information Commission is discussing proposing a warrant to amend the subdivision requirements to include trails. Okay, hold what on. does that mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so define so subdivision once every yeah. part off your land. Something for trails. That's what we're, we're we're discussing proposing as a warrant. We had someone, a member of the public, come to us concerned about the Piper property, 
and <laughs> it's going to affect the snowmobile trails. I'm not sure. We uh, <laughs> we, we've uh, we've been in touch with Polly discussions from the uh, right from the start, and she has okay. been working with us as far as okay. um, being willing to uh, make sure that we that accommodate her. Yeah, yeah. But no, yeah. Um, but I know. Was, I had talked with Polly initially after she purchased, and uh, yeah. just said we did have a trail that went through there, and uh, we could figure out a five, ten, whatever time frame yep. uh, but Good. it does sound like Good. he is willing to work with us in terms of trail through that the, through the process that's uh, uh, so, so just something so for our state that's somewhere in this town I, I wouldn't have a problem with that uh putting putting a warrant item asking voters if that's a good idea or not i mean i think it, it would not affect any current Subdivisions that have plans submitted. Right. Yeah, we can't. You can't. You can't retroactively. We can't retroactively. Well, I mean, there are ways, but you know, <laughs> it's probably not fair. But as as we get more <laughs> subdivisions mm. being proposed in town, because we have the Frost property that mm. was in in works, we have the Piper property, we have the one that already exists. It's next to. It's across from the credit union. And they're talking about expanding there. That just got cleared today. So I'm sorry, Joel. When you said Piper property, I was thinking Dawn Piper, which would be the Frost Farm out on 135. No, we're talking about the one on. My understanding yeah. in street is there. that there may be interest in a trail connecting over towards the school from that property Good. off Main Street as well. Good. So that, but Good. obviously that's across private yeah. landowners. So yes, I don't know that that, but. It does sound like there's we're, we're just seeing more and more subdivisions. Yeah. And, you know, you've got the you've got the root property. Yeah, he has not submitted a plan. This yeah. is the, the, probably the first person that we could potentially impact would be Paul Roop. That could be your key to connecting mm -hmm. the town office. Yeah. As part of the whole, our concern with open space and trying to work with the comprehensive plan committee and having people come to us because trails potentially are being closed off mm -hmm. by subdivisions. Uh, is your, is your suggestion for all subdivisions or just major subdivisions? To be determined, we haven't figured that out. We, we're not that far along yet. Yeah, because, you know, it would not, not be the three, you know, the three from the five air, five air, so it's more than one to five, one to three pieces. Technically, that is a subdivision. Yeah. It would probably be a larger. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because yeah. you, you do need to get pragmatic about it, right? If someone's doing yeah. like a minor subdivision where they've got their yeah. son and they're taking, you know, a two acre plot and saying, this is going to be yours so you can live next to me so I can stay in my house and you're going to build your house yeah. here, you know, to involve a requirement for trails and that kind of scenario would probably be out in a couple of months. Right? This would be a multi unit right. subdivision. So maybe, yeah, I, I think that would certainly be worth exploring with the, with the select board. So if you guys wanted to make a recommendation, you'd, you'd probably get some traction in the select board. Um, so Dave, you're going to try to make it to the next, um, yeah, comprehensive yeah. plan. Yeah. I, can do that. I wonder if it's worth us trying to have the comprehensive plan coordinator come to one of our meetings. I don't you can reach out to Isabella. Yeah. I mean, why don't you ask about that? Okay. Yeah. But uh, right here. If yeah. there is a school board meeting on Thursday, I will be there, but I don't think you want me wearing this hat there for that. <laughs> Sorry, not, not yet. <laughs> um, no. Oh, are you stirring something up? It wouldn't. It wouldn't be on the agenda anyway. It's got to get on the agenda. Yeah. 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 Turn the clock. All right. So items for next agenda or next meeting. When is when do we want to have our next meeting? Is it two weeks? Is that scheduled for the? Yeah. Yeah. Tuesday, seventeenth. Yeah, we've got. Yeah, okay. That's seven o'clock. And uh, 
So the one item we, we hope to review the OSI proposal. Anything else that we want to have on there? We, we could, um, if um, we want to talk about going to the school board, if we have that, if that's going to be coming up. Okay. Any update from Dave on the yeah, comprehensive I'll plan? Maybe first take a look at the first draft of, first draft the, survey. of the survey. Yeah. town map and then start overlaying where our web is starting to come down cool. or something just for me to get a concept of that'll just help me understand what do you yeah like a reference thing that like you know even like a flip down of like here's the town of monmouth and you flip down like yeah, a clear, clear like back in the day <laughs> like the world like encyclopedia yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Love those. It's so old school. <laughs> it just has the overlay, and you're like, I get it now. There's where it's a love program. Yeah, it's it's way you can have layers. Layers. <laughs> layers. It's the layers on the Bappy program. School board is Thursday at central office at 6 p.m. This Thursday? Mm hmm. Any other items for the next agenda? You want to get the agenda? I, to, I can get that to just to, to just yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Can you repeat that time? This 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 Thursday too. This Thursday at six p.m. at Central Office. It changes location. But yeah. It's it's a mobile. Schools. Nomadic. And we won't be able to talk. To no, no, no. I think we should just. If, no. I think if you just find out what the one after that is, you know, yeah. um, we got to go on the agenda weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We can sort of plan like it. If it's in October, okay. just find out what the lead time is. It's a good list right here. All right. Anything else? Thank you, Bush We adjourn. Adjourned. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Eight twenty-five. Yes, it is time for that. That's it. That's even easier than the startup yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. The Zoom X. Is there any? Can you tell if there's viewers on the people watching? Wow.